Are you are you still unaware of what's happening? Hopefully I will be able to offer a little bit of clarity. I did like three hours on this last night because I think it's a wonderful story. It's a very funny story. It is like a, because it exposes the inherent flaws in how costs. stocks are priced really out. It is actually the little guy taking advantage of a bubble for the first time. We shall see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't turn into the mortgage crisis, so you know, that would not be great. But if you are confused, hopefully by the end of this, you will no longer be uh, confused. So let's start with uh, Fox News. Maybe this is a good example or this is a good summarization of all the events. That As of place. right now, you know what this is all about. Take me through the whole story, please. Social media average Joes versus big money players. And guess what? The army of average Joes are winning so far, at least for now. But the question is for how long? Elon Musk even tweeting out his approval with his tweets rallying the stock 30% in the after hours. Elon Musk tweeting game stonk, which is what it's been called on that Reddit Wall Street bets page that's been behind the GameStop moves. Also, Silicon Valley investor Jamath Palapatia says he's betting thousands of dollars on GameStop with the $115 calls for the month of February. Now, GameStop, as we know, has rallied a crazy, they call this insane, 700% this month, literally killing the shorts. Ken Griffin, Steve Cohen backed Melvin Capital, now says that they have closed their shorts. Andrew left this morning at Citron Capital doing the same, both losing money on that trade. Now, GameStop is worth over $10 billion at last count. That's more than Under Armour, more than American Airlines. And GameStop, I would argue, was a... There you go. Yankees. If you want a better representation of how valuations are fucking complete bullshit in the way that the stock market works, this is it. Don't tell me about fucking supply and demand here. If you have no fucking product and your valuation as a corporation, as a company, as a publicly traded company, is higher than others that have like actual international uh, factories and, and uh, not only do they have brick and mortar retail on top of everything else, but like literally robust online uh, sales, like e-commerce e uh, operations and shit like that. This is basically Blockbuster 2.0 getting a massive pump from a bunch of understandably frustrated day traders and, and uh, retail investors that frequent Wall Street bets because one of them acknowledged that uh, you could actually make a fuckload of money because of the way that these these hedge funds had overshorted the, the GameStop stock when it was already fucking super low, like buried it into the goddamn ground to make additional money. Shorting is like betting. When you bet on a stock, it, that when you bet that a stock, the price of a stock is going to go, uh, right, so is going to get lower uh, in the future. Okay, that's the easiest way to describe it. Fox is lying. Melvin didn't actually close out their positions. Yeah, I think they're lying so that they can get people to sell, I assume. Okay, well, we, I'm, not, I'm not sure whether we differ on this, but I'm calling it a casino and I don't like it. I think it's going to change. The Again, dog, you're literally a commentator on Fox business, bro. It's like an MTV vj saying really these video games are indecent they're showing too much skin like you're literally a fucking you are in it you're in the thick of it you describe this kind of gambling as though Why it is completely sensible mindful? and makes sense every day that's a part of your job is to normalize the stock market it is so shocking that these very same people are acknowledging correctly yeah, mind sure. you that it is literally gambling. Oh, it's not gambling when you're making accurate assessments and recognizing that a company does not have XTC a good future ahead of it. Looking at, uh, you know, trends and, and quarterly earnings, I've recognized that this is no longer gambling. It's like, dude, it is no different than saying it's gonna hit red because I've seen out of the 30, 33% of the time it's hitting red. So it's gonna hit red this next time. That's it. That's what you're doing. You're, you're gambling. You just, you're gambling with like extra steps. Tesla had been shorted infinitely for, for so many years. And what happened every time he put out some good news, the stock rose, the shorts had to cover They're and investors, retail investors kept plowing the into the stock. So this is the exact same story that's going on in GameStop. So sell. Elon Musk has been this the beneficiary to the point of the fact that he is now the richest man in the world. So that's why he's cheering <laughs> on GameStop. This is just part of the Wall Street game. Yeah, Elon Musk hates shorts, and yet, and yet, suspiciously, whenever, whenever those covers come back, uh, his his stock price has fucking benefited tremendously from it. I mean, that's literally this, and and I do understand why Elon Musk hates uh, shorting. If you're a fucking CEO, of course you're gonna fucking hate shorting. Basically, if you have enough money and if you have enough influence, you can literally try and, in a lot of circumstances, actively drive down the stock prices 
of a fucking company. So stonks. Yeah. It's not great. Of course, people are fucking mad. And that's precisely why there is like an entire industry built around defending it. And uh, those who want to defend it say things like, no, actually shorting is good because it's corrective market behavior. It's exposing the flaws within a company, as I uh, briefly mentioned earlier on. And you can say the exact same thing about what's happening with the actions of Wall Street Bets and those fucking retail investors on Wall Street Bets pumping up the fucking price of GameStop. They are engaging in a corrective market action by recognizing that hedge funds that over leverage or over short are uh, a, a, a stock well below what it's supposed to be are going to get fucking clapped up because there's literally an infinite Don't dollar see. value that you can take out of them if they do such a thing. Let me press the point. Back in 1999, early 2000, the dot com bubble. Who was left holding the bag? Who took the big losses? It was the little guy. Back then, they weren't called retail investors. They were called the little guy. Fast forward to today. Who's... I mean, 2008 market crash. The people that got fucked over in the end is the little guy. The people that got shit on the entire time is the little guy. I mean, there's still plenty of people who obviously fucking credit the big banks for this, this gigantic market failure that they played an instrumental role in, in putting together. And so did the Democratic Party and so did the Republican Party. Shouts out to Bill Clinton. But ultimately, when you look back and you fucking hear neoliberals try to justify what happened in the housing market crash, they say, well, it was fucking middle class people that were buying houses that they just could not afford and that's what it was they were they were going out beyond their means and that's why it happened and it's because that's why we need to have money safely stored in the hands of those who know what to do with it but ultimately the people that get fucked over is literally the little guy like it is literally the little guy it's the people that are buying into this push right now because they hear the memes and they like put way too much Invest into items. it that are going to get fucked over in the end when when people start pulling out the short and simple way of describing to you the 2008 market uh housing market uh, crash is uh predatory lending okay is banks offering predatory lending and then knowing full well that those mortgage payments were going to fail and then literally betting on them failing while continuing to engage in that same practice that they knew was bad who cares about 2008 bro move on yeah you're right it's great i love the copium from so these buy. uh these these big uh trade boys these big stonk boys that's why i'm pressing the point about the spillover effect to not just to the rest don't of the say. market but to investing in general i, I don't think oh, shut the fuck up bitch gonna be any spillover stuart because these big boys the hedge funds understand the game that they're playing they know what they're exactly. doing when they're shorting. they know the exposure anyone who tries to tell you that there is like a whiplash you know the the fucking average investor is getting harmed from this no, the average investor is only going to get harmed from this when the big boys start making money again, when GameStop's price oh, no, corrects it itself. For the time being, right now, the people pushing are fucking actually regular average Joes. A, a, a big chunk of it is like retail investors. And those are the ones who are literally directly taking the money from fucking hedge funds that have absolutely abused the system for far too fucking long. So anyone who tells you like, oh no, it's the, it's the average Joe that's suffering right now is lying to you. If they say they're going to suffer tomorrow, then that's another thing. But if they're saying the average Joe suffering right now, they're fucking lying to you. This, these are hedge funds. You never get yeah, yeah. a perfect fucking villain. Hedge funds are Lex Luthor. Like they are literally the perfect villain from a leftist POV. It's not like they're, they're doing a net benefit to society, okay? They literally only work with the wealthiest investors on the planet. And they he do shit the like this uh, all the fucking time. It is literally great. The fundamentals of the company have been rough here. You know, they ha they're not making any money. They've been closing stores. Uh, you see these big short positions in the stock. And then you this the Reddit board, this Wall Street Bets Reddit message board. It's almost like a populist trader uprising to support the stock um, with these buying of the out of the money uh, options and really hurting the big guys. So it's just been this interesting revolt that somebody's making a lot of money on someone is not and certainly is far out of line with the fundamentals uh, of this company you know it's funny in some cases people think it's it's sort of funny how regular day traders could distort a stock price uh, so much but you, one wonders what they think about this at the securities and exchange commission you know is it manipulation oh. or is it just fair and square talking up a talking up a stock it's fascinating or fair and square talking up a stock is the same as fucking manipulation and that the actual 
people constantly talk about the fundamentals, right? Like, oh, well, the fundamentals aren't there. Like, the market fundamentals aren't there. Like, the, the game, uh, GameStop doesn't have, it doesn't have a good future ahead of it, blah, blah, blah. It's a dying industry, dying vertical, all this other shit, too heavily invested in brick and mortar retail when it's dying. Except the fundamentals in and of themselves, in and of itself, is just fundamentally flawed that's it and this story shows that so right. perfectly okay it's not like gamestop somehow in a revolutionary way came out with a new fucking investment or a new invention sorry is is doing something unique and its stock prices shot up 700 uh, percent it's just pure manipulation and that kind of pure manipulation happens every single day in the stock market it happens every single day. That's it is not even remotely different than talking down the stock, undervaluing it, or I pushing the stock prices you, down by aggressively shorting it coding. and getting other people to engage in that uh, sort of aggressive shorting, which is literally what this hedge fund was doing. So fuck you. The problem is the stock market is not seen as a way for people to make money rather than a way for companies to receive additional funding for expansion or large projects. When the fuck was the stock market seen for that? That is just the lie that they tell you to begin with. Brokers talking about fundamentals this, fundamentals that. Why don't you fund a mental health facility in my neighborhood? I'm not doing too well. <laughs> I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to hear that. Don't know. Yo, I think you're fundamentally no, misunderstanding what's happening. Today. The majority of our slash Wall Street Bets users own uh, uh, call options. That's how they're able to go. control a lot of what's going on. Wait, what have I? What am I misunderstanding? I'm so confused. When you own a call option, the brokerage needs to purchase 100% shares to cover the risk. When this is done on a scale of millions, you end up with hundreds of millions of shares moving. It's great. And I really, really, really hope that they can continue doing this. I, I love it. I hope that they can do more of it. I mean, look at this sure. fucking but meme that came out of it. This is like a question that they asked the fucking president today, man. Our team is, of course, our economic team, including Secretary Yellen and others, are monitoring uh, the situation. It's a good reminder, though, that the stock market isn't the only measure of the health of our, econo of our economy. It doesn't reflect how working and middle class families are doing. But our team is, of course, our economic team. Now they talk about the stock market not being reflective of material conditions. Fucking hell, the moment capitalism climbs back, they, they flip. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joe Biden is going to implement the malarkey protocol, folks. This is extremely funny. Tomorrow morning, a subreddit is going to successfully drive a $13 billion hedge fund into insolvency. This is extremely funny in the inevitable aftermath of the country's wealthy elite. The same people who didn't give a shit as millions of people got fucked over in 08. Clamoring for the more safeguards on the market to prevent this from happening again because it affects them. We're about to see a chorus of financiers, Wall Street ghouls, and likely... Some members of Congress feign outrage that our market, our sweet, precious market, was manipulated by a bunch of Redditors. Never mind that in 08, the people who manipulated the system got fucking bailouts. We talked, you know, we've mentioned social media. I couldn't help but it's not obviously similar to, to some of this um, controversy surrounding Facebook and Twitter and everything else. But, but once again, what, what's one of the... Um, one of the things that we're talking about is maybe misinformation and, and uh, pump and dumps, and it's occurring on social media again. It just, I, I'm wondering whether it's part of the same problem, the type of regulation that, that, uh, that we finally need to, uh, to consider. And like I said, I, we should always have a... We got to regulate, dude. We finally, we literally have to regulate. Notice that an entire group of individuals who literally make money off of telling you the regulation is a burden and a hurdle and bad for capitalism are now clamoring for regulation because this is the last straw. Always remember, these people would rather fucking die than give you money. They would rather fucking die. Better dead than red is the name of the game, baby. It doesn't matter if you're a fucking Republican or you're a dumbass who literally thinks that way yourself personally. Recognize that those who actually fucking uh, have the levers of power in their hands would rather die than let you have a moment of happiness, a moment of clarity, a moment where you think for a fraction of a second that you can maybe pay your fucking baby sister's cancer treatment because now you have a fucking crumb of disposable income. You're, you're seeing the way things can get started again. This is different. Maybe it's Reddit. Maybe it's not Facebook. But you're seeing the, 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 the same situation. At this point, it's not about an election. It's not about a... Uh, an insurrection, but there are interesting things happening that, that seem to be spawned to some extent, or at least, uh, at least blown out of proportion by social media again.
Yeah, it's bad, dude. It's bad. We got a fucking this new technology is real bad, dude. CNBC's David Faber said he's hearing a number of hedge funds are in similar trouble that Melvin Capital saw in his GameStop jamie and may need to be bailed out. Jesus Christ, dude. I think we've all recognized the current pandemic has created a, a unique situation where many people have gotten into day trading, really have no idea exactly what they're doing. It's something that they're trying to figure their way as they go. These types of entities, uh, such as GameStop, have created a, a, a really difficult situation for these people. They think they're missing out if they don't make a bet on them. Uh, they they don't really understand what they're doing. I think small time investors like that, unsophisticated investors. Are hey, what does this say about you or the entire fucking system that you've designed and uphold the legitimacy of on a daily basis at CNBC? If you can get fucking owned by idiots, if fucking morons with like $600 in their fucking pockets can get together and fucking own your multi-billion dollar hedge fund, then that is not an indictment on the fucking morons. It's an indictment on the sophisticated traders, dumbass. That's the point. Oh, these people are stupid and that's why they're putting their money into a stupid thing. Let's not even analyze for a brief moment how uh, the hedge funds are also doing similar shit on a daily basis because those guys are the sophisticated traders, okay? Well, because it creates uncertainty in the marketplace. You know, the dot-com bubble of 1999, I was regularly- Oh, it creates uncertainty in the marketplace, he says. Oh, damn, dude. Also shit. Well, Neil, first of all, I gotta say, I recommended many of these stocks on January 11th or before. I've got the report in my hand that I sent out to my subscribers, and here's the list. The dude, this dude is literally trying to sell his own fucking email list, dude. Yo, I love this shit. This is great. Why? The fundamentals weren't there, brother. What are you doing? You're trying to recommend something with, with no knowledge that it was going to fucking skyrocket as a consequence of collective action? You didn't know that. The shorts, first of all, all of this nonsense, all of this noise, all of this whining by Wall Street, it's making me sick. 140% of GameStop was short. I didn't hear one person on TV complaining about Wall Street. He's right, by the way. Wall Street trying to crush GameStop. He's absolutely right. Stop. 140% short. I told my subscribers, buy this stock, and they made a fortune. I also told them to buy Virgin Space. It's uh, Virgin. We took profits on that today. Fizz, that's up huge. Tangers is up huge. Neil, you can't allow Wall Street to short 75% of a stock, and nobody says anything crush these companies into the dirt, and then when the individual investor makes money, everyone's up in arms. Oh, they're going to lose their shirt? Don't you think people are trading? If it traded 80 billion shares a day, people are ringing a register. I have a kid who bought a house. He had a, he made $50,000 and bought a house. So, yes, yeah, some people are going to lose and some are going to win, but if you want to, if they want to change the rules of the game now because the general public is making money He's right. after decades of the shorts crushing thousands of stocks into the dirt, I have watched stocks being crushed completely to zero uh, and no one ever whim whispered anything because those stocks didn't have Wall Street sponsorship. They were small names. Maybe they went public through a reverse takeover. Whatever it was, the shorts have had their way with the market for decades. No one's ever complained about it. So I am thrilled if you were going to try to destroy a company by shorting 140% of its stock, you have to accept the fact that individual investors are playing the same game that you're playing and now you're losing. Yeah. I mean, no, it's, it's right. He's absolutely correct on on that take 100 percent zero falsehood stated on that front oh. nasdaq ceo is suggesting halting uh trading to allow big investors to recalibrate their positions to combat reddit users dude i will dude this is so good this is so good because how is that legal bitch they own everything dude that's how it's fucking legal they're literally crying to the referee right now because poors are making money and they're not in on it. God damn. Can you imagine if we had a more permanent wealth redistribution program in the form of taxation for these fu sick fucks? Maybe a goddamn higher percentage of capital gains tax or something. Holy shit, dude. You would be living like this every day. You'd be watching these fucking sweat lords cry all goddamn day, dude. They make the rules, motherfucker. And those rules are slanted against you. So every fucking moment that you shit on your fellow man because they're like liberals or because they're fucking Republicans or whatever, they don't know. They want communist China to happen here in America or some shit. These guys are still making all the fucking money. Thoughts on this Warren take? With stocks soaring while millions are out of work and struggling to pay the bills, it's not news that the stock market doesn't reflect on our actual economy. For years, the same hedge funds, private equity firms, and wealthy investors dismayed by GameStop trades have treated their stock 
treated the stock market like their own personal casino while everyone else pays the price. It's long past time for the SEC and other financial regulation regulators to wake up and do their jobs. And with new administration and Democrats running Congress, I intend to make sure they do. She's right. Just read the New York Times article saying that SEC is reviewing this sub and what's going on. SEC, please read to the SEC retards in the sub. Go fuck yourself. Why don't you start investigating why companies can shut down trading so their hedge fund buddies don't lose money? But when people lose money, it's completely okay. Eat a dick. I mean, they're fucking right, dude. They're, they're so fucking right. When you're a fucking retail investor, you don't get a fucking bailout from the billionaire down the street. You don't get a $2.5 billion cash infusion so you can continue fucking shorting. Like, you don't get to literally do that. They do. Not only do they do that, they cry about it on all the fucking media outlets. And then also on top of that, they can get the referees to fucking game the system against them or on on in their favor it's so fucked up i'm still terrified of what is to come and i still maintain the position that the big boys will end up uh profiting from this they always do it's not going to be the little guy the little guy never wins in this story here's what i had to say about it after wall street bet subreddit is able to take down more hedge funds by exposing an exploit before these billionaires decide to call the manager of the sec to take down a subreddit Remember, a hedge fund can drive a stock price of an already suffering business directly into the ground by aggressively shorting it. But if you decide to push and drive that stock price back up collectively and rate a hedge fund in the process, then you're engaging in something that's bad. There's nothing funnier than going up. Uh, there's nothing funnier than going against market fundamentals on purpose and pumping up a stock price purely out of spite against hedge funds. Ultimately, I know institutional investors will still win this battle. But right now, it's great to watch them flail around crying to the referee. GameStop is also the perfect, as I mentioned before. GameStop is also the perfect stock for this because gamers despise GameStop. People were literally celebrating GameStop's demise in the beginning of the pandemic. Either you worked there and hated it, or it was your first experience getting shafted by a company with their insanely low buyback prices. He joins us now on the phone. This dude spits, dude. He spits fucking fire. I don't trust him because he is a CEO and a billionaire. He's also like running for governor. And again, that freaks me out a little bit, but... Every time I've seen him on CNBC, he's just spitting, dude. So, you know, be a little suspicious, of course. Again, billionaire, CEO, Facebook guy, ex-Facebook Andy. But he does spit every single fucking time. Chamath, thank you for being here. Hi, Scott. He's trying to do 0% tax rates in California. Oh, there it is. There it literally is. Okay. I think that what you're seeing is um, essentially a pushback against the establishment in a really important way. You have a lot of people, and I would encourage anybody who is dismissive of this thing to go into Wall Street Bets and actually just read the forums. And I think that you're going to see three kinds of posts. The first kind of content are a lot of people doing some incredible fundamental diligence on companies, trying to think about long-term value. And in my opinion, many of them are doing as good and, frankly, a better job than a lot of hedge fund analysts that I work with. That's number one. <laughs> The second are a lot of people who believe that, you know, coming out of 2008, what happened was Wall Street took an enormous amount of risk and they left retail as the bag holder. And a lot of these kids were in grade school and high school when that happened. They lost their homes. Their parents lost their jobs. And they've always wondered, like, why did those folks get bailed out for taking enormous amounts of risk and nobody helped and showed up to help my family? And then the third. It really terrifies me when dudes that fucking know the problems and diagnose those problems then turn around and in their advocacy literally say what we need is more of the reason why these problems exist to begin with. And what I'm referencing is literally saying like education is a big issue. So what we need is actually more sensible neoliberal free market reforms like that is literally the opposite, dude. And that frustrates me to no end. But I do think that people like Shamat and even people like Andrew Yang are well-intentioned overall, despite the fact that he is a bit of a shark. Like, it's it's totally on purpose to get in on the fucking uh, GameStop shit and then uh, put those funds towards, like, small businesses. You know what I mean? Like, this guy could fucking sneeze on small businesses on accident and save more of them if he wanted to. He's a literal fucking billionaire. But somebody from retail um, is going to eventually be the, to use your words, bag holder in this situation, are they not? And do you think it's, it's responsible for you and some other big names who tweeted about it yesterday and to get involved yourself, knowing that you guys are considered the Pied Pipers, that people are going to follow you into these trades and someone is ultimately going to get hurt after you and others are long gone, Chamath? 
Did, where was that message in 2008, Scott? Really? I mean, that's a joke. For example, let's look at Tesla. Who was right on Tesla? I'll tell you who was right. Every single retail investor. I was right. Elon Musk was right. Let me tell you who was wrong. Every single hedge fund. Name after name when it comes to innovation, when it comes to growth, when it comes to people trying to do... This is the part where I... <coughs> this is the part where I pull out the fucking uh, parachute. Like, you can say rolled, but ultimately, like, it's still the same fucking principle, right? ...and caused these things before. Hedge funds have caused these things before. So if you're going to talk about taking the gun away from the baby, let's make sure we figure out who the baby is. You're relying on the integrity of the stock market itself to be able to do what you do and be successful doing it. You don't think what we're witnessing now calls into question the integrity of the stock market, that a lot of different stocks with seemingly no fundamental story behind them to this degree can see their stock. To this degree is doing a lot of the work there, buddy. To this degree. There is a degree of speculative uh, moves being made in the stock market that is allowed. But to this degree? Well, then that's made up. Where's the integrity of the stock market now? Not to this degree, I say. Not to this degree. Where's the integrity? There is no integrity, motherfucker. That's the point. Stocks rise in this magnitude, and all of that is just fine? That there's nothing wrong with the integrity of the system if that is occurring? The, the lack of integrity in the system is the precursor that caused GameStop to be sold short 136% and for people to try to pile on and destroy a company in front of our eyes. That so this is the pro-capitalist uh, point of view, which I've uh, addressed already early on in the day. From a pro-capitalist point of view, sorry if you think shorting fucking GameStop in the way that you did is, uh, is a part of market fundamentals and you're basically uh, doing a good job by shorting companies like this because you're not just driving the price down, but you're exposing a flaw in the valuation or the, the stock prices of a, of a company, not the valuation, but the stock prices of a company, then this is basically the countermeasure to that. If you overshort, then you get fucked. This is literally just a counter to that. That is the pro-capitalist approach to this conversation. Mine is one step further than that, which is that, yes, they are both a part of the system because the system is fundamentally flawed. It is fundamentally broken and not tied to actual meaningful product and that it should be heavily regulated to the point where it is no longer a gambling in this way and that the ownership uh, should switch over from shareholders to stakeholders such as actual workers that work within the companies. When, no. when Wall Street can have the best of it, they can maybe participate on the side. But then when Wall Street gets the worst of it, they, their parents, no. their relatives will just come and bail them out. Not what I said. They, I'm glad that, they're participating. That, that I'm glad the they're making a lot of money. Happened. I just that think it needs to come with a warning sign. The path, there needs to be a hazard sign, all right? This concept exists in every facet of capitalism, and we never see it, okay? For so many people, they are blind. They have the horse blinders on, and they never see it. it there is no moral hazard argument when it comes to too big to fail banks and too big to fail corporations in general. There is no moral hazard when they're engaging in stock buybacks, okay? over and over and over again gaming the system for the short-term gains of ceos for example there is none of that there's no moral hazard when they literally operate under the uh, on the principle that the government will bail them out regardless but the moral hazard argument is slapped on every fucking time we talk about giving money to poor people because they're in dire financial circumstances as a consequence that is completely outside of their uh, will outside of what they could do, okay? The government fucks up a pandemic. The government says you can't open your fucking business. The government says the pandemic is fake. So what are you supposed to do? What the fuck are you supposed to do? It's not your fault that you're in a fucking shitty situation now. What are you supposed to do? The government is supposed to give you money so you can survive. But that is a moral hazard because that lets, leads you to believe in the worst thing that you could ever believe as a worker, as an American citizen that the government should help you in times of need. And that goes against the American dream, baby. That goes against the American mentality. The worst thing, as Ronald Reagan said, the worst thing to ever hear is a person knocking down your door and saying, I'm here from the government and I'm here to help you, okay? They do not want you to have that realization. That's not the worst thing. That is supposed to be the bare minimum expectation. That is precisely what the government is supposed to do for you. Wait, so they did actually ban fucking 
Oh, they did. They shut down the Wall Street Bet server, their equivalent of the Reddit forum, for continuing to allow hateful and discriminatory content after repeated warnings. Says this was not due to financial fraud related to GameStop or other stocks. Oh, that's bullshit. That's, oh, that is such bullshit. Oh my God, that is fucking bullshit, dude. I mean, do I, do I believe that there wasn't hateful uh, conduct, hateful misconduct there? There was definitely hateful misconduct in that fucking Discord. It's fucking Discord. It's very difficult to, to uh, maintain a proper Discord. You can clap everybody in every Discord, but they 100% did not do it because uh, people were saying the R word or they, they, oh, come on. They use that as a reason. They use that as an example, but that's not the reason why they fucking clapped that Discord. At this time, we believe someone with Discord, someone within Discord has hijacked their server and pointed it to another server not related to us. The situation is still evolving and we apologize for the outrage. As new information becomes available, we will update the thread. In the meantime, here's the backup. Hedge fund managers invaded it and kept shouting the N word. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Norway owns two per what? Norwegian government owns two point six percent of GameStop. Oh my God! The Statens, Pinson, Jonsen, Van Dutland. We own two point six percent of GameStop. <laughs>